everyone. This is Angie with the Painted Feather, live on the Chalk Paint 101 page. Happy to be here. It is one o'clock on the West Coast. I'm in California, and it is 4 p.m. on the East Coast. Wherever you are watching from, I would love for you to tell me where you are joining me from. It is very warm in California today. Hi, Anne. Hello. I'm going to give people just a couple minutes to come on here. Um, so we're going to continue the all around the house theme with Dixie Bell paint today. Dixie Bell has been doing different rooms every week and this week we're going to focus on the bathroom. So I'm going to talk to you about painting bathroom cabinets. This is something that I talk to people about every day and it is just a great way to update the look of your bathroom and if you have those old um, oak cabinets that are the honey color like everybody has and you want to change that you're just a can of paint away from doing that um, maybe a couple other products hello Nina hello Sherry you guys tell me where you're watching from as you come on here and if you have any questions today, please feel free to post them and I will do my best to answer as we're on here. And if I miss it, I will circle back around and answer your questions. So again, my name is Angie. I'm with the Painted Feather by Angie, which is my business in Santa Rosa, California. I upcycle furniture, I custom paint furniture, and I am a Dixie Belle retailer at Whistle Stop Antiques. So if you are anywhere around here in Sonoma County, come say hi to us. It's 10,000 square feet of amazing antiques and painted furniture. Hello from Mississippi. Hi, Linda. So, okay, I have a lot to cover. So I wanna get started here. So I have, I'm not in my bathroom, obviously. My bathroom cabinets don't need to be painted, but I have some cabinets here that we can use as examples. So um, this is the first one, and this is kind of a dark mahogany colored finish. So I'm gonna talk about what we are going to do if we wanna paint this. Hi, Jason, how are you? Um, we're gonna talk about the problem solvers today. We're gonna to talk about Boss, which I will be using. How's it going, Jason? Um, I will be using Boss on this. I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. And then I'm going to talk about Slick Stick. And this is a great product too. I will be putting Slick Stick on this door, this cabinet door. And I am gonna show you, um, I'm gonna use Annabelle in Blue and I'm gonna paint this cabinet. And I've already put Slick Stick on here and I'll show you why in just a few minutes. On the other side, I did not put it on. I'm going to give you a really good example of why sometimes you absolutely need to use a problem solver if you want to get the best result for your project. So, okay, so anytime you're going to paint a piece of furniture or if you're going to paint cabinets or if you're going to paint your kitchen cabinets, the number one thing that you want to do is you want to clean your piece. So this is the basic for every single thing that you're going to paint, right? So we've got our white lightning cleaner. And let me tell you, this stuff is amazing. I've been using the same container for quite a while. So if you buy one of these containers, it's not very expensive. You can fill up a 32 ounce water bottle 16 times, I think, with the water. And oh, doing great, working on a couple pieces. Well, good, awesome. You're gonna be painting while I'm painting. I like it. Um, anyway, save yourself some money, get yourself one of these instead of paying for the water in the bottle if you go to the hardware store and get your cleaner that already is mixed up. A um, couple teaspoons of this in a spray bottle and you're good to go. So all you're gonna do, and I've already done this because I wanted my um, doors to dry before we got going. I've already sprayed this whole thing off, a pretty liberal amount, and then I got a scrubby sponge, one of those green and yellow scrubby sponges, and I cleaned this whole thing off, okay? and in bathrooms you have a lot of chemicals you have lotions you have water um, so the cabinets tend to get pretty dirty so you want to make sure you clean these really really well because if you have anything in between the paint and um, 
you know, the cabinet, it's not going to adhere and you want it to, you don't, you don't want to waste your time and have it come out not beautiful. So, um, so I've already cleaned this with white lightning cleaner. After I cleaned it with white lightning cleaner, I got my little misting spray bottle and I sprayed the whole thing down and then I wiped it off with a lint free cloth. You can use those um, blue shop towels if you want. So clean off your piece and then let it dry. Let it dry for at least like 10 minutes. Don't go in there when it's still wet and start trying to put product on it, okay? So, I mean, if you're doing paint, I guess you're okay with that, but um, just, just wait a few minutes, let it dry. Okay, the next thing that you wanna do for this particular piece here, this is a dark, has a dark mahogany stain on it. I do not want that to bleed through my paint. And if I'm using a lighter color paint in particular, that is really an issue. So you, you're gonna want to do something about that. So what do you use? Well, Dixie Belle has a product called Boss and this blocks odors, stops stains and bleed through. So you're gonna wanna put a couple coats of Boss onto the surface of this. But before you do, this one, I, you can probably tell, it's pretty shiny, it's very slick. Now, why am I not gonna use slick stick? because I need boss and I don't want the bleed through on it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a good little scuff sand. And what I'm gonna use for scuff sanding, you can use sandpaper, um, you can use a sanding sponge, or a lot of Dixie Bell retailers have these rad pads. So these rad pads are by Surf Prep, but Dixie Bell retailers carry these. Um, I carry these, these are amazing. Um, they are really flexible, they're tear resistant, and so you wanna get one of these. And the one I like to use is the fine grit one if I'm gonna prepare a surface. So let's get to that. And the fine grit one is the blue. So, and I cut these in half so that they're easier to use and that I can get multiple uses out of them. And this size is better than the big size for me. So. When I say scuff sand, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna go over the surface and you're gonna give it a little bit of pressure, but it doesn't have to be a ton. So, and get all the edges, get in all those little nooks and crannies, and just give this a really good scuffing to kind of break up the surface so that whatever you're putting on is going to adhere. Okay, so. And I keep on doing that and I can kind of see the surface. I don't know if you can see that. You can kind of see it changing as I do that. So anyway, I'm not gonna bore you guys by like, doing major sanding here, but just wanna show you how much, um, you know, how much you have to push. And I like to go with the grain of whatever I'm painting. So if the grain is going this way, sand that way. Hi Debbie, how are you? So. Just going with that grain, I'm getting down into all those little grooves, I'm doing all the edges, and we're preparing this to put boss on it. How's it going today, Debbie? Okay, and so these have all kinds of little grooves, so I'm just getting in there. And then we're gonna, we're gonna wipe this off because we don't want to paint with our sanding dust on there, right? Easy, easy enough. Okay, so don't be worried if you have to sand. So, okay, and that will just have the paint, help the paint adhere. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and put boss on here because I do not want bleed through. So I'm gonna show you an example of something. I'm doing really well, Debbie, thank you. Um, I'm gonna show you, I had a piece of furniture that I'm working on right now and I know it's a bleeder. And so I am going to be putting I'm sorry you hate sanding, Kathy. You can use slick stick though. I'm gonna show you slick stick in a minute. Um, but since I need boss, I'm, you only need one. You don't wanna use both. So if it's either or, go for boss, okay? If you have a bleeder, do light sanding and go for boss, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you, I have this dresser that I'm working on and I know that it's gonna be a bleeder. So I just put some white paint on it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, bleed through is tannins, from the wood coming through. I will tell you what boss is in one second. Linda doesn't like cleaning. Just clean it, Linda. You'll be happy, because otherwise the paint's not gonna adhere. Okay, 
Let me see if you guys can see this. This is supposed to be white paint, okay? I'm gonna show you different angles. See how orange that is? So this is definitely a bleeder. And so I put some white paint on it without bossing it, without prepping it, so that you can see what happens if you put white paint on something that you did not properly um, prepare for something that's going to bleed. So um, if you're just joining me, Boss is a product by Dixie Bell. Yeah, it looks totally pink, right, Kathy? So um, people send me messages all the time, like what is wrong with my paint? It's yellow or it's brown or it's pink. And that is um, tannins from the wood coming through. So you don't want to see that. So, and then actually I made some notes here. Um, the things that are gonna bleed, oak can bleed, walnut can bleed, cherry can bleed. Um, yeah, just, oh, you just put boss on a Bombay chest, awesome. Yeah, if you're, if you're in doubt, just go ahead and do it because you don't wanna put the effort in and then have it start to bleed through because it's just really a bummer when that happens. Um, and it's just a staining that comes through. It's in the wood and it needs to escape. So if you put the boss on it, it's going to block that from coming up through. Uh, another reason that you would want to use boss is if you have something that has maybe like cigarette smoke sm smell, if you went and bought something and you didn't smell it when you got there because you had your mask on, you get home and it doesn't smell good, go set it outside, um, clean it really, really well a couple times with white lightning and then use boss and then wait 24 hours before you put paint on it. So give it time to do its work. So you can either use it for, for odors, stains, or if you're gonna uh, have bleed through on something. So how do you want to apply it? Let me show you, let me get organized here. So I'm gonna wipe this off because I have, um, I have some uh, sanding dust on here. So I'm just gonna wipe it off with a towel real quick here. And then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to apply boss, okay? so. Get all your sanding dust off. And, okay, I'm gonna back up for one second. Before you do this, if you're gonna be painting cabinets, take the doors off your cabinets, take the hardware off, tape off if you have a counter that is that you don't want to paint the same color, tape off your counter so that you can get a nice clean line under your counter tape off by the walls, protect your floor, um, clean everything really, really well, and then get going on it, okay? Nice and easy. So, um, okay, so at this point we've cleaned, we've lightly scuff sanded, and this thing looks like a bleeder to me. So I am going to take my boss, and you don't have to use the best brush that you have for this, but use a decent brush because anything that doesn't, um, that puts like really, you know, large brush strokes on it. Anything like that is gonna show through if on your, on your next coats. So um, I've already stirred this up, but you wanna stir this really well. And I am using just a premium chip brush. Can I use it on a huge beams that are mahogany? Yes, you can, totally. So I would probably do three coats of boss if I was doing it on mahogany too and wait 24 hours. So definitely. And then if you see it's still bleeding through, you can paint right over, you can put boss right over whatever um, you're painting and then wait another 24 hours and maybe one or two coats. But some things bleed a whole lot. So mahogany is generally one of those. Okay, I'm gonna hold this up to show you. Um, Boss is pretty thin in consistency. So, and I always go with the grain of the wood. So just a light coat. You don't need a ton of product on your brush. So just a light coat, just the same way that you paint really. And you can get those little feet to put your cabinets or your door, drawer fronts or you know whatever you pull off of you know, if you pull the drawer fronts off, if you need to do that, some cabinets require that to happen if you have drawers in your cabinet. But um, you can get those little feet to put your doors on. 
um, or you can just find a piece of scrap wood or something and you'll want to do one side at a time so that you can get both sides so let one side dry and then do the other and long even strokes even with your boss okay because whatever you do on top of this if you have a bunch of brush strokes it'll show so we're gonna put the boss on and I'm gonna let this dry for an hour or so and then I'll do another coat it dries pretty fast and then I'm not gonna paint this for at least another 24 hours because I want it to do its thing sometimes people will contact me and say why isn't the boss working well if you just did it five minutes ago it hasn't had a time it's time to really set up and to kind of encapsulate whatever it's sealing in so just need to be a little patient with it that's this is one of the things that you do have to kind of wait on now the paint dries extremely fast so that's really good okay so that is it i've got my boss on there and i'm just going to put this off to the side and then we will move on to slick stick okay so i've got that there now this this has a label on it because I bought this. You're watching, you're waiting for the silk paint to come out before you paint your cabinets. Yes, um, so Debbie is, is talking about the silk paint that is coming out by Dixie Bell, and that has a built-in primer and top coat. So it is kind of a one-step process for that. So I think that will be amazing when we get it in the United States. It's already overseas, and the reviews on it are amazing. So. Um, Yes, the all-in-one will be really great for cabinets. So if you want to wait for that, you can do that. Or you can just use these products. Is that the largest quantity? Um, the, this is the largest one that I carry. I don't know if this comes in the gallon size. So um, I can get back to you on that. So I'll, I'll find out. I'll have to look on my, on my um, retail sheets and see if we can get that in the gallon. But this is the 32 ounce. This covers a lot though, Kathy Jo. It's like, it covers really, really well. So, but I will circle back and I'll find out for you, okay? So um, anyway, see how slick this looks? This is a very smooth surface. You just finished your kitchen in silk. Awesome, Erin. How, how did it turn out? And was it like super easy? I'm curious. Um, Okay, so because this is so slick, even if I sand it, I don't think that the paint is going to adhere very well. So I'm gonna do myself a favor and I'm gonna put um, slick stick on this. And so the slick stick, which I'm gonna uh, close my boss here so it doesn't dry out. I'm gonna put my brush, it's my premium trip brush. I started to say that, you know, Use a decent brush. You don't have to use your best brush for these, but at least use a decent one because it will really pay off as far as the prep and getting a really, really nice finish. Okay, so I've got another premium chip brush. Um, Dixie Bell retailers usually carry these and they're like six, seven bucks. So not a whole lot of money. They're not 30 like the um, Dixie Bell mini angle or the minis, which I love those. Those are my favorite brushes. They're worth the money if you're curious. Um, so slick stick it bonds to glossy and other hard shiny surfaces to allow for effective painting. So if you have something like glass or formica or um, PVC or let's see, they have all sorts of things listed on here in case I forget metal. I've painted metal many times without using this, but if it's super slick, like a stainless steel, like if you're going to do your front of your dishwasher, washer, which I saw somebody do on the Dixie Bell paint page, um, you'll probably want to use some slick stick. So let's get to it. Super easy. Just uh, stir it up really well and get to painting and do the same thing. Go with the grain of the wood. Of course, you can't see the wood here, but I'm just doing it just like the other one. So long, even strokes. And I'm gonna do two coats of this. So the first coat is going to adhere to whatever I am putting it on. The second coat is gonna grab onto your paint. And with this one, you don't have to wait 24 hours. You can, but I would wait two to three hours before you do that. And my brush is slightly damp. 
so this does have a, a bit of a different consistency it's a little thick so I like to sand between coats it's not shiny metal can you use it and just go on with the paint then yes I've painted metal many times and like I've I actually did a tutorial painting ammunition cans um, and making them you know using them for different things you can put your sewing needles or whatever in there it's kind of a fun thing and I've painted um, antique irons and they come out great your kitchen's rather large wow 34 cabinets took two weeks hold on I'm, I'm trying to read Aaron's message here let's see if I can see it okay six feet tall um, Okay, you did part with an applique or with the sprayer and part rolling. That's awesome. Good job. If you do, if you ever paint a kitchen with lots and lots of cabinets, it is quite a chore. So having a paint sprayer is a good idea. You know, being able to take the tops outside or the um, the doors outside and spray them is really really nice. So. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna get this on here. So this is just my first coat of slick stick. And do your best to get it nice and smooth, but I'm gonna use a 320 sponge after I do this just to get a really nice smooth finish before I put my next coat. So I'm just showing you guys how easy it is to apply these products and tell you when you need to use them. And in a second here, I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't, oh, almost, you almost missed this. I will share this on my page. So The Painted Feather by Angie, so go, you can go watch it. And it will be on Chalk Paint 101. You can watch it on replay. And if you do watch it on replay, hashtag replay for me. So I know you watched it on replay. So thank you for watching, Jen. Welcome. Okay. So that's my first coat of slick stick. And there's a, there's a couple little areas that are not perfect on here, but that's okay. We'll get it on the next coat. Don't keep on overworking it. So just let it be. I'm gonna let that be for now. And then I'm gonna show you this part. I, I'm a very visual learner, so I wanna show you guys what happens if you do not use slick stick and you should have and I've learned this the hard way and now I've gotten really good I've been painting for five years I've gotten really good at knowing what's what's a bleeder and what needs slick stick so I'm going to show you now and then we'll paint the other side so um, this side before you all were watching I painted this with slick stick that's been a few hours so we're good to paint this side but this other side I decided I wanted to show you, I wanted to demonstrate what happens if you don't paint, or you don't put stick, slick stick on something. Um, what do you use a sponge on? Um, are you talking about uh, the, the sponge, like, I'm wondering if you're talking about the surf prep sanding sponges. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand that in between, Kathy Jo. Is that what you're asking me? If not, ask me again. Okay, so this I put antebellum blue on and I did not prep it with slick stick. I did scuff sand it because I wanted to see if it would work well enough to get the paint to adhere. But this is so, oh yeah, Debbie, you're right. You can put, you can use gator hide on the sponge. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked here. I'll go back to that, but okay. This was not properly prepped. This is painted, it has such a slick, um, oh, I said I was gonna use a sponge. Okay, I'm not sure what I said, Kathy. So <laughs> I'll have to go back and see what I said and then I'll answer your question, okay? So probably a sanding sponge between coats, maybe. Okay, so let's see how easy this is to scratch off. If I don't prep my piece properly and I needed slick stick, look at this. That's what happens. Thank you, Kathy. So this side has, so up here it's not as bad, but still think about if you painted your cabinets and you didn't do the problem solvers and it was super slick 
and you needed to, these wouldn't be looking very good for very long and you would have done all that work for nothing. So um, on the edge here, I did put slick stick and look at that. You can't scratch it off. So um, that is why slick stick, if you have something super slick, is very important and it works amazingly well. I am trying really hard to scratch that right now. It does not work. So you don't want this. So properly prep your piece with the problem solvers, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I paint a piece um, or the cabinet. I'm gonna use my really good Dixie Bell mini angle brush and I have my handy dandy very dirty uh, misting spray bottle you can get these from Dixie Bell retailers these are a game changer if you've never used a misting spray bottle and you paint these are awesome so get yourself one of those shake up your paint this is antebellum blue one of my absolute favorite colors this looks amazing if you put um, black glaze or black wax on it it's an awesome, awesome color. So if you've never tried it, I highly recommend it. So I am going to get my brush just a little damp. I've already painted with this, but I had it in a plastic baggie so it wouldn't dry out. And just go into the paint. Don't put too much on here. And this has slick stick on it already. So long, even strokes, and imagine the wood grain generally goes across on top and then turns on the sides here. So let me get my paint where I can reach it. If you guys have questions, you can ask. Actually, and you can spritz the surface of what you're painting too nobody ever told you that you can do that so and then it just makes the paint just glide right on minimal brush strokes and just keep on um, just keep on applying the paint And if you do find that you have a lot of brush strokes in between, oh, thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Linda. Um, if you find that you're getting brush strokes, all you need to do is take like a 320 sanding sponge. Maybe that's what you were talking about. Um, I don't even know what I'm saying. So, you know, I watched these things back and was like, did I say that really? Um, anyway, you can take a 320 grit sanding sponge in between coats and smooth out the surface of your paint so that you don't have brush strokes. So, and okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy Jo. Oh my gosh. I teach yoga too, and I taught a class the other day, and then somebody sent me a picture of a tattoo they got right after my class, and I was like, what did I say during that class? I have no idea. Have to head off to work. All right, Erin, thank you. You're well prepared and informative. I try to be, gotta prepare. Thank you for the comments, and um, go follow my page, Erin. All right, anyway. Don't go get a tattoo after this, unless you really, really want one. Go get one of a paintbrush or something, or of a feather. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Let's see here. All right, this is looking good. I love this color. How's it going out there, everybody? Happy Tuesday. I said happy Tuesday last week and I was like, wait, what day is it? It's hard to keep track with my kids all home and on Zoom school. I don't really wanna be their teacher anymore. Okay, here we go. 
So, as you notice, when I'm painting this, I'm not really getting the edges very well right now. So that's something that you're gonna wanna do. So you're gonna wanna be able to set it on something so you can get all around the perimeter. And that's why I really recommend pulling off the doors and um, taking the hardware off so that you can get a really nice consistent even finish on whatever you're painting because if you don't pull the doors off then you're probably not going to get I already painted that part but you're probably not going to get the full perimeter of your door and you want your cabinet to look like somebody professional painted it you don't want your friends to come over and say you know hey did you paint your cabinet because it's obvious you know you want you want them to look at it and be um, impressed by it and then they'll ask you about it and then they'll be painting their cabinets so um, this is a really really nice way to update your bathroom you can do whatever color you want to do make it look fantastic you can even paint your countertops um, you can paint your tile and you can get stencils to make your tile still look like tile, but just update it with the colors that you want. So um, it's really endless what you can paint with Dixie Belle paint. So, and um, the last thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is, if you're painting this obviously for the bathroom, you're gonna to want to seal it. And the way that I seal it is I like to use, you wanna use gator hide if you want to protect it from the water and have the most durable finish on it. But I always use a coat of the clear coat satin first because it makes the gator hide go on really, really nice and smooth. So do one coat of your clear coat satin first. And I apply this either with a brush or with that um, fancy blue sponge that you see Dixie Bell retailers carry and just get the sponge a little bit damp first and go in long, even smooth strokes along the surface. And if you miss little bits while you are on your first coat, don't worry, you'll get it on the second coat. Um, Gator Hide is the toughest, toughest top coat, getting tongue tied here, toughest top coat that Dixie Belle has. And this really is great for any areas that you're gonna have water in and bathroom cabinets get really beat up. There's lots of people in and out of there and you use them every single day. So two to three thin coats of gator hide will protect those cabinets and keep your paint looking fantastic for a very long time. So um, put on the gator hide, you can use a, um, like that quad zero steel wool in between. If you ever, if you get little, um, you know, drag marks while you're painting or while you're applying this. So that's just a little tip for you. So anyway, you, do you guys have any questions for me? Happy to answer any questions. I think I covered what you need to do for um, if you have problems, pro if you need problem solvers. So you don't want bleed through. You don't want your paint to peel off. So slick stick or boss and if you have like, um, let's see, somebody asked me recently about oak cabinets. If you have oak cabinets and the grain is very open on oak, you can mud those in if you want like a super, super smooth finish. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Um, so, and then, but usually it looks really good just getting a fresh coat of paint on that surface. So even oak, you can do a wash over it. You don't have to do full on paint. You can um, do a 50% paint and water wash. Just a lot of different options for you. So anyway, um, if you have any questions, shoot them my way. Feel free to message me anytime. And um, again, my name is Angie. I'm with the Painted Feather by Angie on Facebook. I would really love it if you go over and like and follow my page. And if you need to find a Dixie Bell retailer, just go to, excuse me, <coughs> go to the Dixie Bell Paint page and search for a local retailer in your area. I have a frog in my throat. Um, <coughs> of course, I don't have water here. Anyway, thank you so much, and um, hopefully I get my voice back, and um, I will be back next Tuesday, and I will have a voice hopefully then, and um, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is not what my voice normally sounds like, but that's how it is. All right, um, I will see you all next week. Yes, Chalk Paint 101. 
or the Painted Feather by Angie. There's my voice coming back. The Painted Feather by Angie on Facebook. Thank you for watching. I will be back next Tuesday at one o'clock on the West Coast. Um, frog in my throat. Four o'clock on the East Coast. All right, everybody, have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.